so sloping system are no good as a waterproofing system because they cannot give you an extended life they are very difficult to remove after a span of its failure because they are very bulky they give a lot of dead load onto your structure there is a lot of load when we are actually uh, you know giving a big slope onto a terrace which is every 10 feet you will have one inch of uh, slope which will easily carry out water outside so uh, on the highest point we will be having five to six inches of that dead load which is actually not needed for your structure so we do this considering that yes waterproofing uh, we have done waterproofing but then that is a myth because there will be always cracks into your brick bed coba we always see cracks into brick bed coba over a period because brick bed coba does not have any flexible strength it does not have any steel rods which will let your uh, flexibility and uh, will not you know uh, result into cracks but then we always see crack on on a span of say two to three years and just because there will be thermal expansion contraction which will always be happening onto your cement uh, based surfaces and all those expansion contraction will result into cracks so when the cracks happen and when your brick bed saturate say if there is a rainfall for say a span of good four or five days your brick bed brick is an absorbent material so is not a waterproof material something which is absorbent cannot be waterproof we understand this right so if there is any penetration continuous penetration of water and if your brick has saturated it has saturated enough it will let water to your structure your slab your surface and if your slab or your structure has cracked which will happen at least at on a span of three to four years maximum and minimum two to three years the cracks will emerge which will not be a very big crack it will be a hairline crack but then that will start penetration of water inside and what we generally have a myth is the dampness is not a waterproofing failure for us we only consider the dripping the you know droplets if you see any droplets inside your structure we consider that as a waterproofing failure no that is wrong any damp which is entering inside is damaging your structure your steel everything and if you are near a coastal area or if your city has more humidity right so if you are on a coastal area you will have more cell salts into your uh, air that is blowing out you will have nitrides you will have chlorides you will have sulfides which can if they penetrate inside you don't need water for that they are just if it is carried out with the wind with the air the dampness which is carried out into your structure can keep on damaging your structure on a faster pace if you have more humidity your humidity when it enters into your concrete into your steel it will start corroding and swelling of your concrete so if we are on a dry area and if we are near a coastal zone or a riverbed zone the humidities in air will differ and when a crack is emerged into your concrete your span of damage is very shortened if your humidity is more so all these things are important for you to understand before we start waterproofing so all the myths that you have so it is very important that all the myths that we have we need to uh, get over it there, there is good good saying that it is not only important to learn new things it is also important to unlearn things which are wrong here i would also like to mention there are some disadvantages that you have with your traditional sort of waterproofing one in civil industry there is nothing like zero zero so there will be always a lack of slope there will always be waviness which will let water store at some places which will then let water enter into your brick bed and you, your brick bed is something which is absorbent in nature you all know that and your water will always come inside right after saturation of your mm, bricks 
there there will be always terrace slabs which are bigger in areas and you can't do brick bed without joints so as i told you about concreting your brick bed will also have this discontinuation right so if there is any cold joint which has happened so when when you have started your waterproofing one day you took a break overnight and then you started the waterproofing again so what will happen is your brick bed or any concrete layers that you have created will start cracking from that place because that is a cold joint which will start behaving differently so that is also one area where this is a disadvantage the third thing is your drain pipes your inlet outlet pipes when you have your inlet outlet pipes what happens is pvc and concrete behaves differently they have different thermal expansion and contraction so when you have two different featured material they will behave differently and they will form a crack around it so your pvc pipe when there will be crack on the outer side of it because we have filled cement up on the sides of it and there will be cracks onto it because thermally pvc has different movement and concrete has different movement due to which crack will emerge and water will start penetrating through it with pipes you also have this uh, pressure with which water will come out due to which your pipe when it has been settled some place it will get delocated we also see this problems into your our, our daily lives where when there is a pipe which is delocated completely from a bathroom outside or some places terraces outside and lot of places so this de delocation also will uh, facilitate water penetration and leakages happening we also want sometimes uh, solar panels to be fixed onto the terrace and that is also a structure which is sometimes unplanned and uh, there will be a lot of nailing which happens there will be a lot of sho uh, shocks that will be given while fixing and there is also wind shock that will always be creating that pressure due to which there will be cracks which will be happening onto your surface and your water proofing uh, seepages will happen third important part is your parapets sometimes we avoid parapets for waterproofing because when it is a bathroom and it is a shower cabin you need to waterproof complete height right so what we do is a uh, complete 8 to 10 feet height we uh, do a waterproofing treatment why because there will be splashes everywhere of water and we don't want water to be penetrated inside to your walls so same happens with your terrace parapets also and your external walls also so all those places where water will be hitting you cannot just keep on avoiding uh, some places and you can you know partially do it correctly so it is half knowledge is always wrong like half of the treatment will always bear chances for errors so parapets are also walls which needs to be done a good waterproofing treatment on right and it should not be avoided so brick bed and some traditional systems do not facilitate any kind of waterproofing which can happen onto those areas so there should be some method some modern technologies the abundant material which are available in the market which will be learning in the this course which will facilitate your waterproofing to be done on every places so let us also understand that waterproofing material availability and your requirement first your requirement needs to be checked your area needs to be checked how big it is what will be the pressure of uh, water fall what will be your characteristics of your usage of that floor is it going to be uh, you know uh, a public area is it going to be a podium right where cars will move so a different area will require different sort of a waterproofing material choice so it is very important that waterproofing material is a small part but then very vitally it is also important to make a good choice of waterproofing material because we understood that there are a lot of parameters which we need to consider before we start waterproofing because they are also important and there could be chances of error if we have avoided them but then waterproofing selection is also very important 
important very vital area which we need to consider while waterproofing because if we have selected a wrong sort of waterproofing material if we have not tested the material that we are going to use if we don't have any data of past performance of that material if we don't have any data of past site that that company has done or with that material then we are definitely making a wrong choice of material just on base of contractor or a staff that we have gave, given contract to we can't make a waterproofing material choice waterproofing material choice goes through a number of tests that a waterproofing need to pass for that waterproofing material to be used for waterproofing your structure so it is very important very very important that you consider and you make your choices wise for your waterproofing considering your requirement of your structure what place are you going to use your waterproofing material at so let's take an example of there is a product which is widely used as a waterproofing material it has been promoted it is it is a million dollar market and the myth about it is is it is waterproofing material but then the SBR styrene butadiene rubber that is mostly used as a waterproofing material which is a very cheap source of a waterproofing material it can cost you somewhere around 3 to 6 rupees a square feet right so that cheap a material that is a temporary waterproofing solution it is not a permanent waterproofing solution it cannot protect your concrete structure permanently we need to really be cautious and not use styrene butadiene rubber uh, as a correct waterproofing solution or a considered to be a permanent waterproofing solution because it does not surpass a lot of waterproofing tests that are done on to waterproofing and there are a lot of limitations that you have with this kind of material and uh, it is not wise enough to choose this kind of waterproofing for your tanks or your swimming pools water areas and where there is a constant risk of water leakage so all those areas need a good waterproofing material choice which is uh, sometimes a bit higher priced but then it can satisfy your uh, complete requirement why i do why do i choose costlier material on top of this material which is already been used for say 20 years in india because when we do understand that when we are choosing a 5 rupees say square feet waterproofing material uh, we have a bathroom of say 50 square feet to 100 square feet right so what we are spending is uh, 5 into 50 or 5 into 100 which is 500 rupees maximum onto our waterproofing material but then we are using a tile or a stone which is say 150 rupees a square feet 170 rupees a square feet we are using an italian which is uh, say 300 rupees 500 rupees a square feet we are using bathroom fittings do we want all that to be removed when we see waterproofing errors we won't want to right so if i say say uh, you are using 5 rupees a square feet use 30 rupees a square feet material right but what are you spending more all right you you are spending 3000 rupees does that cost you much it does not but then you would want that waterproofing to be done those places why because that will permanently secure any leakages and there will not be any waterproofing errors that you will have right so it is very important that we choose wisely and we spend wisely on to waterproofing because waterproofing is something which is most important because you will change your interior say 5 uh, to 10 years later but then your concrete will have a life span of good concrete will have a life span of say 80 years if you are somebody who likes to change interiors regularly say 10 to 15 years life uh, life span of interior and your structure 80 years so you can definitely calculate which is more important and where you need to spend so waterproofing because of this also i have seen a lot of interior bungalows who have spent more than 50 cr 80 cr in the market in the bungalow interior and they face waterproofing problems 
and everything is gone all furniture is gone every amenity is gone and he is frustrated and annoyed by the water seepages that are happening inside the structure because nobody likes you know everybody likes rain in the balconies but but nobody likes rain inside your house right so if we don't want to face those kind of uh, problems we need to choose wisely for the we need to make you know in depth survey about waterproofing choices before we start our waterproofing